Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, where we give you guys a first perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, is Kyle Lowry the missing piece uh, on the Clippers? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also be on the lookout for the Dreamers Pro community that we're launching next week, and also be on the lookout for DreamersPro.com, which is coming up after that. Anyway... Uh, so let me get into this here. So last night I watched the game with the Clippers versus the Chicago Bulls. It was a pretty entertaining game for about three quarters, and then it just got out of hand. The Clippers pulled away, and it, and they got a pretty good win um, to finish up. I think they did. They were on a two game road road trip. I forgot the team that they beat. Um, yes, they beat the Timberwolves prior, so it was good. But overall, um, the Clippers had gone through a pretty tough stretch. Um, they had lost three out of their last four games. Three out of their, out of their last. Um, uh, five games they lost to the Nets in a very close loss. Then they lost they lost to the Boston Celtics, which is a, which is also a very close loss given the fact. But that one was a little bit more disappointing because they were leading in that game. And then they lost to the Kings, the Sacramento Kings. Now Kawhi didn't play very well in those games, especially in late stretches of those games. He didn't play well. He wasn't closing the right way, and I was a bit surprised how um, he came out looking in that, in that game against the Sacramento Kings, given that they had had a little bit of rest. But Tyron Lewis said, listen, you know, with changing coast all the time, changing time zone, sometimes you, you you go through a little bit of a malaise, right? And um, he said that happens. So now these guys have finally gotten their legs under them. They just finished up a two game road trip and they're going back. They're going back to L.A. I saw a story last night with um with Lou Williams talking about like, man, it's cold as hell out here in Chicago. And he's like, man, I'm happy to be going back to the West Coast to get some sunshine. So um, Kawhi's been playing uh, better and the Clippers have been playing better. Uh, overall, they won their last um, two games. In the last two games that Kawhi Leonard has played, he scored 36 and 33. He's been much more aggressive, which is something I've been looking for. I've been asking for. I've been begging for from my favorite player in the NBA. Just be more aggressive, man. Be more more aggressive. And he's done that. All of that with Paul George being out for the last two games. I think they're going to get him back. <laughs> Um, I think they have off today, and I think they have a game on Sunday, which I'm, I'm not sure the team that they played. I have to check the schedule. They're going to play on Sunday, uh, but I have to check the schedule to, to see what team um, they're going to play. But uh, nevertheless, we're not we're not publishing content tomorrow anyway. We're taking off tomorrow, so uh, we'll all just watch that game and see uh, what happens and, and, and what unfolds because we got some things that we want to do. We're trying to release the, uh, the, our platform next week. So, um, yeah, so they have that, but the Clippers still have one kind of weakness that I understand, and it's there. Uh, it's at the point guard position, right? They're they're still lacking um, a little bit of depth at the point guard position. Currently, they have Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams. They have Reggie Jackson and Terrence Mann. Now, all of these guys bring different things. They have their strengths and their weaknesses. If you look at Lou Williams, I mean, if you look at Pat, uh, Patrick Beverly, for example, plays great defense, plays a lot with a lot of energy. As you can see, Patrick Beverly, just a flat out competitor. When they have him out there last night, they put him on Zach Levine to start that game. And, you know, he could tell that he really bothered him in that first half, but they defended him, obviously, uh, by committee because they have some good uh, perimeter defenders anyway with Nicholas Batum, Kawhi, Patrick Beverly. These guys that play a hellacious defense. And then also you have Marcus Morris Sr. who comes off the bench, who wasn't playing such great defense last night, but they have great defenders on their team. So you have Patrick Beverly who can hit threes, plays defense, uh, and does all of that. Really great energy guy, steady, steady, but, but, but can also get his own shot, especially in the transition and going to the rim, as you saw last night. You have Lou Williams, who's exclusively a scorer. Um, he can he can he can he can heat up and in, in, in really quickly. I think he scored 20 in the last 20 plus in the last three games. Then you have Reggie Jackson, who's who's hit or miss. He can score, but he's out there. He can make some suspect decisions uh, here and there. And then you have Terrence Mann, who's a great second year guy who comes off the bench, plays with a lot of energy, can defend, has a lot of length. Um, and whenever he's on the floor, he's a net positive. Um, even Ty Lue said after the game that, listen, he was a plus. I think he was a his plus or minus was like a plus 17 or something when he was on the floor. So he was great. And um and I love the defense that he plays with. But Patrick Beverly, as I said, is their number one option as, as a point guard because, again, I love his energy and his defense. And he's a 40 percent. Uh, he shoots 40 percent plus from the three point um, line now. But I think the Clippers, however, would be better if they acquired a Kyle Lowry. That's the guy. That's the guy that that's that, that, uh, that um, this name that, that keeps um, floating around in the air. This is the guy that everyone keeps talking about. Uh, could the Clippers, you know, uh, what about Kyle Lowry? Could they get Kyle Lowry? Now, first of all, 
Kyle Lowry is a championship point guard, number one. He's probably, he's most likely going to be a Hall of Famer uh, uh, for sure. He can score. He can defend. He can make smart decisions with the basketball. He's a flat-out leader, but he's a flat-out competitor. Kyle Lowry competes, man. Um, almost at the level of a, of a Patrick Beverly, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I think last year he was playing with a broken hand or something. I mean, the guy is just a flat-out competitor. If I look at his numbers... Uh, this season that he's averaging for the Toronto Raptors. He's averaging 17 and a half points per game. He's shooting 44% from the field, 38% from the three-point line, 88% from the free throw line, uh, getting you 5.4 rebounds, 6.6 assists, which is really solid, and getting you 1.1 steals. And in all of this, these stats don't give you his intangibles, like his leadership um, and his toughness uh, and his competitiveness. These are all things that the Clippers could use, right? And they, and they have a lot of that type of toughness uh, from, from from Patrick Beverly, to, to, be, to be quite honest with you. Now, if they got Lou, uh, uh, Kyle Lowry, I think they would be the favorites, at least to come out of the Western Conference, because then they'll be solid at every single position on the court. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. They will be, all of their positions would be solidified and they would have a solid bench. Now, the question is, uh, how would they get him? This is the tougher question to ask, right? This is the question that I think uh, a lot of us have to kind of grapple with and, and, and really uh, come to terms with. Now, how would they get this guy? Now, you could say, well, what if they package like a Reggie Jackson and a, and a Lou Williams in a trade for him, right? Maybe the Toronto Raptors want to go through a rebuild. Who knows, right? If I look at the NBA standings right now and I look at the Eastern Conference, the Toronto Raptors, and now, now they're in the number number seven seat, the n- number seven spot. So I don't think the Toronto Raptors are trying to tank this season or, and trying to go into the lottery. I think they're trying to make the playoffs because that team has too much championship pride in their DNA for them to just try to, you know, say, listen, <laughs> we're done playing this season. Let's just pack our bag, grab our ball, and go home. I don't think that's the case. Now, if you said, let's give up Patrick, Be- I mean, let's give up Reggie Jackson and Lou Williams for this guy, the problem is these guys earn a combined nine point six million in their salary, right? And Kyle Lowry's earning thirty million, so the salaries don't work. You even if you put uh, Lou Williams and Reggie Jackson together, you say, "Listen, we're going to give you guys two great point guards in return for one." The salaries don't add up. If you now try to throw in Marcus Morris, then it brings the it brings everything to what twenty? If you add what fourteen? Close to what twenty five million? Uh, if you, yeah, yeah, about twenty. No, no, ten. Yeah, about twenty five million. It's still, it's still, it's still, it's still not enough, right? To get Kyle Lowry. So, um, the Clippers would need to give up a lot more to get him. And I'm not sure you'd want to give up Patrick. I mean, uh, Lou Williams, Reggie Jackson, and Marcus Morris Senior. I don't think you'd want to do all of that. So, um, how the how how the the, the exact way that it would go about acquiring him is what I don't know. I don't see how they're going to make the numbers work. And if they do that, I think they're going to gut a lot of their depth to get this guy to be on their team. So I'm not sure how they will get him. Would he be a perfect fit, fit for the Clippers? Absolutely. Who who wouldn't want a Kyle Lowry on your team? Like who wouldn't? Any team that he goes to, he would help tremendously unless that team already has like a Stephen Curry or, uh, you know, um, or one of these, uh, one of these uh, Chris Paul type of players that are already there. Um, obviously any team he goes to, he would make them better, especially the Clippers. But in this case, I don't see how it's going to work with the numbers and given the pieces that the Clippers have, uh, to entice the Toronto Raptors to make that trade, uh, to make that trade. Unless Kyle Lowry just says, unless, I mean, things can happen in the NBA. We've seen them happen before. We've seen, we saw when Paul Gasol got traded for Kwame Brown. Now I don't remember, I think Kwame Brown had a similar salary because I think the Lakers were trying to dump that salary. Um, so that's one way, but now I don't see how it's going to work with the numbers, with the, with the math, but, uh, if they were able to pull it off, then I think it would make the Clippers the favorites, uh, to come out of the West. And I think it will be a toss up between them and the Lakers. So, um, I think it would be a great trade. Will it happen? I don't know. So what I want to know from you guys is, do you think that Kyle Lowry would, is the missing piece for the Clippers? Or do you think, listen, um, he is, but there's no way in hell they're going to be able to get him. Whatever you guys think. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day and catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.